Witch Queen is out, and one of the things I had to do this week was I had to grind out and handcraft my perfect god roll tailor-made empirical evidence, which is the kinetic two-round burst sidearm that uh, is part of the throne world suite of weapons. And uh, I got one of these to drop, obviously, everyone did. And uh, I decided, you know what, I want to make this thing work, you know. I've always been a fan of the two-round burst uh, sidearms that were, you know, the aggressive two-round burst sidearms like Breach Light, for example. I've used the Brass Attacks a lot as well. So really nice to have a, a kinetic one now, now that Breach Light has been sunset. And uh, the, the perk pool on this one was interesting. I've seen a lot of people who are like, oh, man, this is terrible. This is a really bad perk pool. I actually disagree. I think this is a really good perk pool for a handcrafted sidearm that you can tailor make to your liking. Um, and I knew right off the bat what I wanted. Like looking at the perk pools, like I know exactly what I want. First and foremost, I was like, I want perpetual motion because perpetual motion is freaking insane. It is, a, it is an S tier perk, especially on something that's really run and gun like a sidearm. You know, you're constantly in motion. So to have, you know, three buffs for the price of one perk on your gun is uh, just, that's just how can you pass that up especially when one of them is a stability buff that's that's a really big stability buff for a two round burst sidearm that's one of the things people complain about the most about these sidearms is the kick and so anything you can do to mitigate that that kick is a win so obviously perpetual motion bam you got it you got the handling you got the reload speed you've got the um, you've got the stability. That's a fantastic perk. So I knew I wanted that. The other one was uh, I wanted unrelenting, and that might seem I guess a little shocking, but I'll come I'll come back to why I want that a little bit later in the video. But this whole process of tailor making a gun to your liking, this whole crafting process can be a, a bit much to wrap your head around. So what I really wanted to do in this video was kind of use my experience with my empirical evidence as a bit of a case study so that I can walk you through what my process was so you know exactly what to do. You've got a game plan laid out in front of you with clear steps that you need to do. If you want to take a, uh, a gun that you you know is craftable and you want to start from, from step one and get it all the way done till you're to the point where you've, you've crafted it and you've got everything going for it that you possibly can and uh, and you can create a really great relationship with that gun. So that's that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna unpack that whole process. So um, the very first thing you gotta do is you gotta get the pattern for the gun. Okay, so you gotta get the pattern for the gun so that you can craft it. Without the pattern, you cannot craft it. You can only get the drops out in the world and the world drops wherever they come from for whatever gun you, you want to craft. Um, so those perks can't drop enhanced and um, you're missing out on the like base enhanced trait, which is kind of like step one of the crafting process. So it's basically going to be a much worse version of the gun. The ones that you get to drop out there in the world, like they're supposed to sort of give you a taste for what the gun's capable of and what its perk pool includes. But they're just really bad versions of what these guns can be with a little bit of uh, energy and effort. So keep that in mind. Like if you got one of these to drop and you're like, I like it, but it's really not perfect. It could use more of this or more of that. Just remember, it's just a worse version of what the guns is supposed to be. So any gun that you sort of kind of vibed with, you may as well try crafting a better version of it and taking it for a spin. So first thing you do is you get the pattern. How do you, how do you, how do I know how to get the pattern? That's a good question. Uh, a lot of people have been asking that question. Like, I want to craft the Throne World Sniper Rifle, but I don't know how to unlock the pattern. So what you do is you hit your start button, whatever it may be, and you go over to your Triumphs tab, okay? And on the right-hand side of the Triumphs tab, you're going to see Patterns and Catalysts as a, um, a little subcategory, a little tab that you can click on. You click on that, and then you're going to go through all of the craftable weapons and it will specifically tell you right there exactly what you have to do in order to get the pattern. So for the, for ex if, you know for example the Throne World sniper rifle, which is awesome by the way, I'm gonna do a video on that. That gun is insane and I freaking love it. But let's use that as a case study. So you want to be able to craft one of those. It's gonna tell you right there exactly what you need to do. Is you have to extract the um, the deep sight resonance from it three times. In other words. You need to get three of these sniper rifles to drop with a red border. 
and then you have to use those and complete that that deep site resonance and then extract it okay and doing that three times will give you the pattern and you can now craft the gun so you need to know obviously where does the gun drop um the best way to get the sniper rifle actually as as of the day that i'm doing this commentary it is the wellspring drop so um, always check Wellspring, that public activity uh, in the throne world. And um, every day, it's going to reset what the drop is for the day. And today, it happens to be the sniper rifle. So if you haven't, you don't have access to the higher tiers of Wellspring that has a better chance of dropping these things, you can just farm. It took me four runs on the regular version, just the base version of Wellspring, to get one of these to drop. Just four runs, and I had one drop. And so you're looking at maybe an hour's worth of investment tops just to get a, your first drop. And I I could be wrong on this, but this, is has, this has been the case every time I've gotten a new Throne World weapon. It seems to be that the first time you ever get a Throne World weapon to drop, it will drop with a red border, the first one at least. That's been my experience. I can't verify that that is 100% true. It's just been 100% true for me so far. That's all I know. That's, that's all I can attest to. So anyways... Keep an eye on where they're dropping, go after them, and that's going to be like step one. So let's assume that you've got the pattern now and you can craft one. So you go and you craft one, <laughs> you know, just go do it. And um, you're going to craft one. It's going to be a not great version of the gun, all things considered, in, you know, regarding what it could end up being. But it's going to be step one. It's your, the first step of the process. Because now you can now reshape that gun as many times as you feel like it, assuming you have the currency to do so. So now you've crafted one. Let's say you've crafted one. Just go in and reshape, uh, hit reshape on the gun. You don't have to actually commit to doing anything right now. But hit reshape and look at the perks that are available on it. And there's a couple things you want to keep an eye out for. One is the cost for the perks that you want. How much of the neutral element am I going to need? How much adroit element am I going to need? You're going to keep an eye on those things. It's going to tell you exactly what it costs to get those perks. So I just write them down. I literally have a notebook next to me, and I write down the things that I need to grab. Okay? So I know that I need, well, I need 2,000 neutral element. So I'll write that down. I need, you know, 50 adroit element, whatever. I'll write that down. So now I have a list of things I need to go after. And so that's uh, the cost. That's the first thing you want to look out for. The second thing you want to look out for is what level you have to be on that gun in order to unlock the perk you want. It might say in order to uh, craft one with perpetual motion, uh, you're going to need to get to level 14. Okay, so I guess I got to level this gun up to level 14 because I want, I really, really want perpetual motion on this sidearm. So that's what I did. I literally, the, trust me, the fastest way to do this is not in PvP. I know that with Catalyst, sometimes like it counts for more in PvP if you complete, um, you know, if you get a kill in PvP for a Catalyst while working on a Catalyst, it's going to give you like a big chunk of progress as opposed to PvE. The trade-off is not worth it in PvP. It is not worth it. I tried it. It took like 50 kills to level it up one time in PvP. So <laughs> that's a that's a tall order for an average person to get 50 kills on a gun just to level it up one time. Don't even bother. You want to go and do PvE activities. So activities will level it up. So if you have it equipped during an activity, you're going to get a chunk of XP towards that level. And obviously PvE kills on combatants. I found one of the fastest ways to do this. I literally put my headphones on. I put on Spotify and listened to music. And I went to the entrance of Grasp of Avarice. And I just killed stuff. I killed stuff for like half an hour. Literally 30 minutes. I sat down. I killed stuff. And I got this thing leveled up all the way to 12. So that I could craft this with specifically the perks I wanted. I wanted perpetual motion and unrelenting. So then after I leveled it up. I go back to the crafting table. I reshape the gun. And by the way, to reshape it, you have to have it unlocked and not equipped. So always unequip it and unlock it before you go to reshape. Then you reshape it, and uh, you're going to click on the perks that you want. Assuming you acquired the uh, currency that you needed to craft those things, you craft it. And now, now you're going to hit reshape again. After you've now crafted it, you have the base uh, enhanced like trait, like I went for stability. It's the first thing you select. And then I went with 
Uh, I picked like my barrel and mag options that I wanted. And the next thing that I did was I picked perpetual motion and unrelenting and I crafted it. That's where we're at right now. The next thing I did is I went back in to reshape and I looked at what the costs were for the enhanced versions of those perks. Cause that's the last thing that you need to do in order to get this gun fully maxed out and tailor made. So I looked at what does enhanced perpetual motion cost me? What level do I need to be at? What does enhanced unrelenting cost me? What level do I need to be at? I took a note of those things and then I went and I just, what I've been doing by the way, I cleared out a bunch of space in my vault. Anytime I get a gun to drop with a red border, the first thing I do is I throw it in the vault. I just, I have Destiny Item Manager pulled up. I drag it, I drop it in the vault. It's there. And so then whenever I want to craft a gun and I look at what the cost is for it, what I'll do is I'll then just pull up dim and I'll look at those guns with the red border and I will see what kind of essence I can extract from that gun. Cause it's not the same on every gun with a red border. Some of them are going to have a droid element. Some that are going to have your energy element. You know, there's like four different kinds of elements that you can extract from it on top of the neutral element. So you want to look at what you're going to get out of those guns. And is it one of the currencies that you require? And then I'll pull out, out of the vault, the ones that I need. I'll just do the math. Okay, well, if I need 2,000 neutral element, I'm, I've got 1,000 on me. So I need to pull this many guns out of the vault and, and uh, go ahead and level up that red border. Completed it. Extract that essence. And I just do the same thing. I just, again, Spotify is on. Headphones are on. I'm at the entrance of Grasp of Avarice, and I'm killing ads until I level these things up. And if it's a heavy weapon, might I suggest you can do... Uh, what I was just saying, Grasp of Avarice. Also, there is the, uh, I'm spacing on the name of the Lost Sector. Lost Sector at uh, the Cosmodrome. When you spawn into the Cosmodrome, you turn around and go backwards through those buildings and you come out where you, if you're like a new light player, you come out of the wall and you fight that spider tank, right? That, uh, that area there, there's, on top of those silos, you can jump up into a Lost Sector. The lost sector that's there, it's the one where you fight the giant servitor at the end. When you when you clear that lost sector and you open up the chest, it throws like 10 heavy ammo boxes at you. So if it's a heavy weapon, that's a great place to do it because I'll just run through and I'll use the heavy to kill all the adds in the lost sector until I run dry. And obviously if I get more heavy ammo along the way, I'll use it. But then when you go and you open the chest, when you clear the lost sector, you get full heavy ammo again run out, run back in, start it all over again. That's a great way to level up the heavy ammo if, uh, if it's a heavy weapon with a red board. Just a side note. So anyways, the last thing you're going to need for an enhanced perk is Ascendant Alloy. This stuff is hard to come by. It is rare. So there are a number of ways that you can acquire Ascendant Alloy. One of those ways is by leveling up uh, Banshee, the gunsmith, to level 16, and you will get one Ascendant Alloy from it. That is a tall order. That's a heck of a lot of grinding, uh, but it is something that could just happen organically as you're playing. The other way is that the Cryptarch will sell you one Ascendant Alloy a week per account, not per character, per account, so you can get one from him every week at reset. So that's two ways that you can get an Ascendant Alloy. You can get it from the Wellspring. Apparently the higher difficulty version of it will drop it more frequently, but it is still a rare drop. The other way is with the daily, um, the daily heroic missions at the Throne World. And so just the base version, the f I think it's 1520. Uh, level 1520 is the requirement. And it has champions, right? You know, Barrier, Unstoppable overload just see what it's you know what's in there that week when you click on it and you know tailor make your loadout appropriately but uh it's match made at 1520 it's not match made at 1550 so if you want higher chances of getting it get a couple of buddies go into the 1550 if you're playing solo you can do the 1520 and get match made with other blueberries but you're running a risk because blueberries are blueberries uh, I had one guy today who literally made it his mission. I don't, I don't know. He's some no life idiot, but his goal was to go in there and pick up one of the objectives, like one of the, um, it's like wrenches that you have to use in order to progress the mission for the daily mission today. He went in there and as soon as that thing dropped, he picked it up and then intentionally 
like uh, was griefing. He screwed me over, and the other the other blueberry that I queued with, he took the thing and he just ran to the edge of the map and he stood there, you know, and he wiggled his joystick every now and then to make sure that he wouldn't get booted for being AFK. But his whole goal was just to make sure that we got halfway through the mission and could not progress. So he was just trolling people. Real D-bag move. So you're running a risk, but it is possible. I solo queued and I got like four um, Ascendant Alloys out of just the 1520. So it can happen. I would say... For me, it was like one every four completions. So it's a bit of a time sink because uh, when you're running with blueberries at the 1520, usually it takes about 20 minutes on average, I would say. If you're running with a pre-made fire team and you guys know what you're doing, you can bang them out 15 minutes or less, even the 1550s. That is the best bet. But anyways, if you want to send an alloy, I recommend doing the daily missions, preferably three-man fire team 1550, if not possible, uh, match make 1520 and you'll get the stuff eventually now you go back to reshape the gun and you can get the enhanced perks and praise god almighty it's been a grind it took you a while to get here but now you've got it i went through this whole process myself and i did it uh, almost exclusively solo so i understand the time commitment that it is but once you get done with that hey you have a gun that not a lot of people have because you've tailor-made everything about it to your liking you've got the enhanced perks that you chose I went with Unrelenting because the enhanced version of it uh, also gives you a handling buff. So you get plus, you get a handling buff, and you get health on kill every other kill. Um, couple that with the fact that I'm trying to use Devour as much as possible. So I'm getting a lot of health after kills. And um, and then Perpetual Motion. I have the Enhanced Perpetual Motion, which cuts the, um, the time required to activate the perk. So that's another thing. Research what the enhanced perks do before you commit to them because they are very pricey. You may uh, have buyer's remorse if you spend the the um, currency to get an enhanced perk and then you end up not really caring for it. So make sure you research ahead of time which ones you want, what they do, and if that's going to synergize well with your play style and your builds. And that's it. That's all she wrote. And that's how I got my empirical evidence fully capped out to the way that I want it. And I've got several hundred kills on it already in PvP. I love the thing. It's a really fun sidearm. So best of luck to you. My next weapon that I'm going to be crafting is is almost undoubtedly going to be the Throne World Sniper Rifle, the Father's Sins. That sniper rifle is is just chef's kiss amazing. And I can't wait to show that thing off. But hopefully this was helpful. And hopefully you have a little bit of a game plan on how to get your guns up and running exactly how you want them. Thanks for watching the video. Be warm and well-fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you in the Crucible.